Hello, my sweet friends. It's teacher Elena. And today I'm so excited to share a story called Berry Magic. And it's written by Betty Huffman, who is a Yupik Eskimo storyteller. And Terry Sloat, who writes children books, helped her write it and helped with the illustrations. I'm so excited. Let's read. Long ago, before your grandmother's memory, before the salmon berries and raspberries, before cranberries and blueberries, there were only little black crowberries on the tundra. They grew like dots on the tops of the hills. Every fall, the older women grumbled about the crowberries. Oh, these berries are so dry. Oh, these berries have no taste. Oh, these berries are not even worth picking. But they picked them anyway. For there had to be a gutak, which is Eskimo ice cream at the fall feast. And it had to be filled with berries. Anana watched the older women. She liked the way their brightly trimmed cuspucks decorated the tundra. And while she watched them, a plan grew in her mind. As soon as Anana was home, she took down her sewing bag her grandmother had given her. Inside, she found everything she needed to make four little dolls dressed in fur parkas. She even found four tiny scraps of cloth colored red, blue, orange, and rose. She made the first doll quickly, stuffing it with dry grass. After stitching pieces of squirrel skin together for its parka, she tied the piece of red cloth around its head for a bladuk, which is a headscarf. That's how you say that in the language you pick. So these, yes, oh my gosh, look at that. She's making a doll. And who is peeking in at the window? Hmm. She made the second doll more slowly, filling it with soft moss. She dressed it in muskrat fur, trimming it with blue beads. The dangles of blue beads matched the doll's little blue bladuk, the headscarf. So this doll had a blue bladuk. <gasps> Look at that, she's taking her time. And who's peeking in on her over here? Anana made the third doll carefully, filling it with reindeer hair. She dressed it in a fine parka of reindeer skin. She placed the doll in the window, letting the setting sun paint an orange glow on its cheeks that matched the bladuk tied around its head. Anana made the last doll with much joy. She lovingly filled it with goose down and covered its plump body with warm fox skin and stitched it together with a tiny pair of seal skin mukluks for its feet. Oh, mukluks are the shoes that she made for it. That's how you say that in the Yupik language. Finally, she strung a necklace of rosy beads around its neck to match its rosy bladuk. She looked at her dolls and slowly drew in her breath. Ah, 
darling, she murmured, for she was pleased. She worked very hard on these dolls. Then Anana wrapped the dolls in her fancy parka, placing them inside her reindeer skin bag, along with her dance fans. When the moon began to rise, she carried the bag up a nearby hill. With every step, her load became heavier. Hmm. Look at all the animals watching her. Hmm. At last, Anana reached the crowberries at the top of the hill. She turned in a circle and looked out all around at the vast moonlit tundra. So beautiful. When it was time, she untied her bag and slipped the parka over her head. Then Anana began to dance Snuggling the rough around her face, she sang, Atsaya, Atsaya, that means berry. Atsaukina, be a berry. Anana peeked down at her bag, out wiggled a little girl dressed in squirrel skins and wearing a bright red bladuk. <gasps> the girl went tumbling down the hill past the crowberries, leaving dots of tasty red cranberries shining in the moonlight. <gasps> Anana sang again, Atsaya. Atsaya, Atsaukina. Out of the bag skipped another little girl with blue beads dangling from her muskrat parka. And she wore the blue Vladuk. While Anana danced, the girl leaped over the crowberries and past the cranberries. She rolled head over heels through the bushes below, leaving clusters of juicy blueberries wherever she went. Onana danced faster, singing louder. Atsaya, Atsaya, Atsuakina. A happy girl dressed in reindeer skins and wearing an orange bladuk popped from the bag. She jumped over the crowberries, sprang over the cranberries and bounced over the blueberries. She hopped across the boggy areas from hummock to hummock, leaving a trail of tangy salmon berries on long stems. Mm. Wow. Knowing there was still one doll left in the bag, Anana shouted with excitement, Atsaya! But she was too loud and the last little girl was shy. So she lowered her voice a little bit and called, Atsaya! But the last little girl was still very shy. So Anana whispered in her kindest voice, Atsaukina. The plump little girl blushed and smiled at Anana as she peeked out from the bag with her rosy beads flying. She gave a great leap beyond the crowberries and the cranberries beyond the blueberries and the salmon berries and into the grass at the bottom of the hill. While Anana finished her dance, sweet rosy raspberries peeked out from the shadows. 
Anana's heart was overflowing with joy as she hurried home. While the moon was still shining, berries spread from hill to hill. By morning, the tundra was covered with red, blue, orange, and rosy berries. Anana woke early and filled her baskets with berries for the fall feast. That night, the older women couldn't get enough of the berry-filled agutak. While Anana danced, she heard them saying, these berries are so juicy. Mm, these berries are so tasty. Ah, Ling, these berries are like magic. Even the grumpiest woman was smiling. Anana smiled too. And from that day until now, Anana's berries have filled the agutak at every festival. The end. And over here on the right is the recipe for Ana Anana's agutak. Very nice. So you need two cups of shortening, two cups of sugar, salmon berry juice, white fish, cranberries, blueberries, salmon berries, and raspberries. Very nice. So if you wanna make a gutuk at home, you have the recipe here. The end. And there are the authors on the right. On the left is Terry Sloat, and on the right is Betty Huffman. Thank you for enjoying this story with me, my friends. Oh, look, there are all the magic berries. Goodbye, my darlings.